Can you fly, Bobby? Clarence, no! No! Arash is a pretty cool dude, but he's a single-player game. You pop Stella and you shuffle off the mortal coil. But what if there was an Arash for the whole family? Enter Chen Gong. Mr. Catapult Turtle here is a two-star caster introduced with the imminent anniversary event, and he's got a nasty bag of tricks. Spoilers, he's also my favorite of the new low rarities. The flashiest part of his kit is his Noble Phantasm, two-pronged formation. Names are tentative. It's an AoE arts attack that kills the leftmost party member aside from himself. It has a colossal 1500% damage modifier, meaning Chen Gong does damage way beyond what you'd expect from a low rarity caster. Its overcharge effect increases damage but doesn't do anything at 100%. It has a really strange way of doing this because it technically gives you extra hits. However, this only procs when your targets aren't already dead, meaning it tends to be more relevant for challenge quests than normal gameplay. Apparently, the lore behind two-pronged formation is that Chen Gong supercharges an ally and they go apeshit, which is what's damaging the enemies. But this process kills them. The whole exploding arrow thing is just window dressing to distract you from what's actually happening. He's a bit like Archer in his broken phantasms, except instead of swords, it's his friends. The damage is nice, and we'll talk about that some more later, but the real value is in forcibly changing your frontline. Think of it this way, it's a reusable, if more restrictive, plug suit buff. Changing your formation mid-combat is such a powerful effect that it was the core of several high-performance farming teams, not to mention its challenge quest applications. Right off the bat, you can use two-pronged formation to trigger on death effects like a VK Brun's Invuln or Nagayoshi's Star Dump. Also consider expendable buffers and utility servants. Paul Bunyan, Chiron, Ryder Martha, and Amadeus for example. A lot of the time, these guys can get in the way of your main attacker by eating your hands without having any built-in screening. Yeah, you could run Poster Girl, but that's a rare craft essence and it's got a big deployment cost. Chen Gong can take them off the board at his leisure, and he's not restricted to his noble phantasm for doing this. He has Scapegoat, a targeted taunt that also comes with AoE crit chance reduction. If you're running a thick frontliner like Jinako, he can extend her screening duration and, if necessary, turn her into a projectile later. Scapegoat also has weird esports applications where you run Gong with a scope to blow up an ally and taunt himself. Because you're running him at level 1 in this scenario, he has a very high chance of biting it. This lets you either get your main attacker alone on the board or rotate in multiple buffers at once. Scapegoat lets you control the early turns of a fight to a huge degree, and having it on someone who's not Kiritsugu is amazing. Chen Gong is way more splashable and accessible, so keep this in mind as a part of your toolbox. Another cool trick you can do with two-pronged formation is immediately max out enmity characters. Enmity is shorthand for damage tied to your servant's missing health. Killing a servant immediately pops any revival effects, and some of these, whether built in or from craft essences, put their user at one health. Maximum enmity. Servants like Arjuran and Mary and Ashwataman can actually combo their NPs behind two-pronged formation to immediately reap the benefits of having no health. Better yet, Scapegoat lets you protect them from that stiff breeze that's out for their lives. Another notable enmity servant is Hijikata. He's a berserker, and Chen Gong? He fucking loves berserkers. Tactician's Wish is a targeted single-turn buster buff. When you use it on a Zerk though, it gets two other effects. Firstly, they gain temporary max health. Secondly, their crit damage goes up by 100%. The health part isn't too important. It's only a single turn and Zerks aren't the greatest at using extra health in the first place. But that crit effect. These are hero creation numbers, so you have a Merlin for Berserkers. On a free Servant? That's absolutely nuts. His other skills have a few perks, but at the end of the day, this skill is the only one you actually need levels on. Now that's value. Working with Berserkers does have a difficulty curve. On the easy end, you have ones like Raiko that generate and absorb a huge number of stars without external help, and Morgan Le Fay and Beowulf who give not quite as many stars. Some have absorption but limited generation. Arjuna Alter, Dino Crisis, Mori Nakayoshi, Lu Bu, and of course, Hijikata. For these, you can leverage passive star generation to great effect. Craft essences like 2030 and servants like Anderson will give you just enough to load up your attacker and go to town. Now we come to the third category of Berserker, the ones without absorption effects. Absolute potatoes like Mr. Hyde, who need a fucking star enema to do anything. For these, star dump effects are what you need. Expendable supports like Amadeus get the job done, but you'll also want to stack your backline with the right CEs. Golden Catches the Carp is the classic choice, and its starting charge opens up tactical options, but at this point it's not something you can get anymore. Alternatives include Holy Maiden's Teachings, Crowning Beauty Greater Glory, and Scenic Beauty, which is coming this year in Gilfest 2. 
Supporting is nice and all, but what about attacking? What if you want to go that route? You're in luck, because Chen Gong is an absolute beast, and he can quote-unquote loop. Conventional loopers aim for 50-100% to charge refunds depending on whether they're quick or arts attackers. Supposedly, there are gong builds that can do this legitimately, using servants like Tamamo, Caster Gilgamesh, Paracelsus, Nero Bride, Alan Ling, and Jinako. I don't have much experience with this loadout, and I hear the requirements are quite tight. So experiment at your own discretion. I guess you can also run him in generic multi-attacker teams, but those aren't terribly interesting to talk about, so you'll have to use your own noggin on that one. My preferred strategy, and cover your ears, free-to-play copers, because this is some filthy whale shit. It often has Gong missing that 100% mark, and sometimes even the 50% mark. Every time Chen Gong NPs, he kills the servant in slot 1. If the next servant is also a charger, he might just be able to NP again. And again. And again until either all the enemies are dead, or all his allies are dead. One of the downsides of the Gong system, by the way. You have a finite amount of ammunition, and Guts memes are usually incompatible with looping. It's not a relevant drawback in normal farming scenarios, but Imaginary Scramble and some challenge quests can get you awfully close to running dry. By running four 50% chargers including a friend support, you can farm almost any arbitrary combination of enemies. Now the catch is that you seriously want two of those to be Castoria. She gives damage and increased refund, both of which smooth out any bumps you might encounter. And here's a neat trick. By running her with a starting charge CE, you can get access to Round of Avalon. For an instance where that's relevant, there's a node in Shinjuku that's my go-to for farming Drake Ludes. It's a caster node that ends with an archer. A 260,000 health gazer. Conventionally, it's an absolute bastard to farm, and even with a combination of Grails, Foes, and a maxed out Black Grail, I came up short with Chen Gong. But with Round of Avalon, stacked before 2 prong formation, I get that fucker every time. Obviously, not all of you are going to be running a Grailed Gong or Black Grail, but the point is that you have a lot of control over your damage range, and you can customize your backline to reach for more, picking up more buffs as you approach that final wave. Initially, this team requires you to own Castoria, Waver, and Scotty, so it's not for the faint of heart or the light of wallet. Of course, these are all high-tier supports to begin with, so meta friends shouldn't have too much trouble finding them. And once Rainus gets her upgrade next year, you can replace one of the non-Castoria picks with her. To account for shortfalls in your refunds, you can run a Mystic Code that has charge donation. The Mages Association uniform is the most readily accessible, but you've got alternatives if you're so inclined. Chen Gong also helps out with Tactician's Advice. It's a party charge fixed at 10%, also has defense and damage reduction. Let's talk CEs for a second. On Gong's victims, you can run stuff like the Merciless One and Battle of Kamlan if you're so inclined. For the man himself, you've got a nice variety. Arts picks like Mark on a Smiling Face, Royal Icing, Painting Summer, and Formal Craft, starting charge options like Kaleidoscope and Imaginary Element. I happen to like Golden Sumer for nodes where you need to stagger your charges. NP damage is great too. You've got your Black Grails and Heavenly Demon Princesses. During events, the Gong system can accommodate pretty much any event CE. For low stakes farming, this means you can run 6 drop teams, which is amazingly efficient. But don't underestimate event damage CEs either. Combined with Gong's natural power and all the buffs you accumulate from his victims, these can push your damage to comical levels. There's a Saber Wars 2 node that's all riders. For a laugh, I threw Chen Gong at it, and he blew it away, despite losing half his damage to class disadvantage. By the way, sorry for just showing looping footage this entire time. I can't help it. I get high on watching my own war crimes. Chen Gong is amazing. Obviously, the whale build is out of control. Gong is an addiction and he's making me stupid. I've just been gonging everything left and right ever since I learned about it and I can't stop. My brain doesn't work right anymore. As a one-size-fits-all kind of deal, he saves me a ton of quartz on attackers. Of course, he runs you a lot in supports. That's the trade-off, but one I'll gladly take. You'll have to make a judgement call on grailing him. On one hand, casters have bad stat efficiency due to their built-in class modifier. But on the other, you gain a ton of reach, and I'd personally vouch for doing it. But even taking those aristocratic shenanigans off the table, he's an amazingly valuable servant on utility alone. The buster buffs, the taunt, being able to charge your frontline, these are highly valuable properties and you're missing out big time if you don't build him up to some degree. Two thumbs up. Strongly recommend the gong. The GSSR is coming this weekend and I'll be streaming my polls. Twitch.tv slash Tyson. The Night Banner has a few servants I'm missing, including the elusive Brynhildr. But it's also got Nobu and Bibi, and we know what happened last time. So stop on by to see something terrible happen. That aside, like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you there.